This is a record that deals with a uh, home front, the home front part of uh, U.S. history, which was uh, the Civil Defense Corps. I think each little town and also cities had them. And orders were, were handed down um, from the federal government uh, to these local civil defense units. And this one deals with uh, blackouts. And blackouts were created um, in order to protect, protect the U.S. supply ships off the coast from being silhouetted by the lights from the homes and the businesses. So this is the um, a civil defense reporter, January 18, 1942, produced by Casper and Gordon Studios, Inc., of 1 Boylston Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, it says, one of the country's largest radio program producers. So this was sent to radio stations and then played. So I thought it'd be interesting to play this and hear what the uh, blackout restrictions were uh, during 1942, at the height of World War, World War II. Let's play that. Part of the U.S. Uh, World War II history. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, this reporter informed you of the official air raid rules as issued by your State Committee on Public Safety and also made mention of blackouts. Inasmuch as the subject of blackouts is of major concern to Massachusetts citizens, we should be aware of the fact that there are regulations now in effect. Some that you should know are, one, the signal for a blackout shall be the air raid alarm or the extinguishment of the street lights, whichever occurs first. The all clear signal shall be the signal for the end of the blackout. Two, upon the signal for a blackout or at sunset, if that occurs during an air raid alarm, the occupants of all premises or parts of premises, public and private, shall extinguish all lights or darken the premises so that no light is visible from the outside. Three. The managers, superintendents, or persons in control of hotels, apartments, office buildings, and all other places of multiple occupancy and use shall extinguish all the lights, whether in public places or in tenant rooms, on the signal for a blackout. Four, lights may be left on in rooms which have previously been equipped for use during a blackout in such manner that no light whatsoever shall be visible from the outside. The windows and entrances to such equipped rooms or places shall be covered with heavy draperies, curtains, heavy paper, board, or black obscuration paint, so that no light may be visible from the outside. Skylights shall be especially obscured on the outside to prevent reflection of light, and shall be specially protected from the inside to prevent injury from falling glass. Five, provision shall be made by occupants for the extinguishment immediately on the giving of a blackout signal of any lights left burning in premises not occupied at night. Six, all outside lights for work being done in the open shall be extinguished immediately on the giving of the signal for a blackout. Rule number nine, which all of us smokers must remember, says, smoking or lighting matches outdoors during a blackout is forbidden. Rule number 10, in emergency only, flashlights of very low intensity and directed downward may be used. Recent tests have shown that for any outside light, white lights are preferable to blue lights of the same intensity. Rule number 13 affects drivers. Operators of vehicles other than emergency vehicles shall reduce speed to 15 miles an hour, drive to the side of the road and stop, turn off lights and seek shelter. Vehicles already parked at the curb or in parking places or garages shall be left there unless ordered or permitted to be moved by the police or military authorities. We must keep these instructions in mind as there are penalties attached to them, and lack of knowledge will be no excuse. And further than that, Carelessness or negligence in observing precautions invites disaster. It is possible that enemy air raids by night may require emergency blackouts at any time. While such raids may well be of short duration, it is of great importance that as complete a blackout as possible be put into effect immediately. Under such circumstances, it is necessary for your own protection and that of others that such blackouts be complete and effective. You know, most of the instructions that you and I get are concerning material preparations, such as preparing for blackouts, fires, and so forth. But there is an even more important phase of defense. It is our own thinking and our own attitude. We must live up to every regulation that the government makes. For instance, the restriction of certain articles we have been used to buying, such as tires, and soon other articles, maybe even foodstuffs and types of clothing. Somebody may come along to you and say, you know, I know a friend who has what you want. He puts some away. 
will not become a party to any such deal. And explain to the person who thinks he is doing you a favor by offering you these things that he is practically asking you to defeat your own America by going against its emergency laws. Real Americans would rather walk in below zero temperature than buy a tire when the country says not to buy that tire. Because actual assaults have not yet reached most of us, it is sometimes hard to realize that we are at war. Our enemies know this and are counting on careless thinking on our part to help them beat us. Such chiseling as I have mentioned is just like cheating yourself at solitaire. Only in this case, you are hurting the whole victory effort. Well, this is your civilian defense reporter who will be back on this station at the same time next week and who respectfully submits without one doubt that real, honest American thinking and true, earnest American effort are going to win this war. Incidentally, this reporter will answer the questions you have sent in on the next Saturday's United We Stand program on station WEEI, Saturday afternoon. Oh, pretty interesting. There's a civilian reporter, a civil defense reporter, talking about uh, uh, blackout restrictions during uh, January of 1942 and what restrictions would be in place. And also talking a little bit towards the end of the record about the uh, uh, black market of uh, certain products that were restricted because they were more valuable to the overseas war effort than they were to uh, civilians. So I hope you enjoyed that, didn't find it too boring, and it is part of uh, World War II uh, home front history going back 71 years.